What's going on guys, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to build a simple camera chat in Python. So let us get right into it. All right, now before we get into actual coding, I wanna mention that this is not going to be a Zoom clone or a Skype clone because we're not going to transmit any audio data. We're only going to transmit camera data. Uh, we're going to stream the video from the camera. We're not going to transmit any audio data. And the reason for that is because I have not really figured out how to do this platform independently yet. So I need to work on that. And I don't want to publish a package that only runs on Windows because I know how to do the audio transmission on Windows, but I it's, it's kind of tricky on Linux for me right now. So I need to figure that out and then we can do another video on that, which brings me to the next point that we need to install a package that I have written. It's called vidstream. So you open up your command line and you type pip install vidstream like that. And if you want to make sure that you have the latest version because it's currently in the alpha and the buggy alpha, uh, so it's constantly changing. And if you want to make sure you have the latest version, you say pip install minus minus upgrade vidstream, and then you should get the latest version, which you need uh, to use or in order to use the latest features. So once you have that, what you're going to do is you're going to say import, or actually we're going to say from vidstream import camera client, and from vidstream import streaming server. Those are the two things that we're going to need because what we're going to do here is we're not going to have a server and a client, we're going to have two clients connecting to each other. So we're going to have two computers with the exact same script and they're going to connect. I mean, the data is going to be different. So the IPs are going to be different, but, uh, but the functionality of the script is going to be the exact same and they're just going to connect. They're going to have a receiving end and a sending end. So they're going to send camera data and they're going to read or receive and display camera data. And for this, we're going to need multi threading. So we're going to import threading and we're going to import time. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to uh, define the receiving and the sending end. So we're going to say receiving is going to be the streaming server. Here we're going to receive the data from the other camera client and the address that we're going to pass here is the local IP address of this computer. So in my case, 192. 168017. If you want to figure out what your IP address is, you're going to have to go to CMD or terminal. On Windows, you're going to go to CMD and type IP config. And you're going to look for the IPv4 address. I think it's IPv4 address. Uh, and on Linux, what you're going to do is you're going to type if config into the terminal and it should be something like inet, uh, inet address or something like that. Uh, so this is how you find out your private IP address. Now, the important thing is here, if you're streaming this in the internet and not only in your local private network at home with multiple computers, you need to um, take into account that you need to specify your private IP address on the receiving end. So if you're running a server, you need to specify that it's running on your local private IP address. But if someone connects to that server and it's not in the same network, you need to specify the public IP address or the, the sender is going to have to specify the public IP address because if you have a server running in the internet, this server is going to run on its local IP address. But if you want to connect to it, you need to specify the public IP address. And for this, you can use services like myip.is. I think that's the site that shows you your public IP address. Uh, but we're going to do this locally with two laptops. We're going to have a live demonstration in the end. And for this, we're going to only use private IP addresses here. So the port is going to be 9999. You can choose another port as well. And then we're going to have a sending end and this sending end is going to be the camera client. And here we're going to have a different IP address and this different IP address is going to be um, the, the target IP address. So in this case, the IP address of my other laptop. And this is going to be 192.168.0.172. In my case, again, what you do here is you go to the other laptop uh, the other laptop types IP config or if config, and then you get the IP address from there, or you know the public IP address. So once we have that, we have a server and a client, and we now have to specify the thread. So we're going to say t1 equals threading dot threat, and a target function of the first thread is going to be target is going to be um, the receiving end dot start server. We're not calling the function, we're passing the function. And then we're running the thread by saying t1 
t1.start like that. Now what we do after that is we say time sleep and this here is uh, really not a good practice. This is not best practice, this is not a good practice. You should never synchronize scripts with, uh, with the sleep method because the reason I'm doing this here is just for demonstrational purposes but actually what we need to do is we need to make sure that both, uh, both clients are actually listening before they can start sending or start connecting to a server. So we need to set up the servers and then we need to have some time for the clients to connect to those servers because if the client connects or tries to connect to a server that doesn't exist, we're going to get an exception, it's going to stop and this is not what we want. So actually if you're gonna do this properly, what you would have to do is you would have to use locks or some kind of synchronization. You should not do this with time.sleep but you can do this for this video. You can also do time sleep five. Uh, the basic idea here is that we're going to say start the server and then wait, give me time to start the client and then uh, so we need to start both, uh, both scripts simultaneously here otherwise you would also be able to uh, if you don't want to do this with sleep you could also say sending dot start server try over and over again until you get no exception and then start the actual stream. Uh, but we're going to do it like that here and we're going to say t2 equals threading thread target equals the sending end dot start stream again not calling just passing t2 start and then what we're going to do um, now right now we have the main thread and the main thread calls two extra threads but the main thread is still running and we'll, we want to have it running because then we can say while input is not equal to stop while this is not the case we're going to just continue so we're going to ask for the input over and over again and if we get out of that loop because the input was stopped what we're going to do is we're going to say receiving dot stop server and sending dot stop stream so we can always terminate uh, we can always terminate the script by just writing stop and now what we're going to do is we're going to take that script we're going to change or actually we're going to swap those IP addresses uh, I'm going to do this on my second laptop as well and then we're going to see how the camera chat or the camera streaming works here. Alright, so let's go for a little live demonstration. I now have my Linux machine on with the exact same script. Uh, the only difference is that those two IP addresses are swapped. So Windows is hosting on this IP address and sending to this IP address and on Linux it's hosting on this IP address and sending to this IP address so it's swapped. I also changed the IP address because I figured out that this is my actual local IP address but it doesn't really matter to you. And I turned off my camera because I need the camera to be available to this script so that it can stream uh, to the other machine. Other than that, <clears throat> those two scripts are actually the same and we're going to run them at the same time. On Windows we need to uh, navigate with cmd to the directory and we're going to say python and main.py and on Linux I'm going to also run the same file so we're running here, we're running here and it's going to take uh, a little while here but it's going to connect eventually and you're going to see me from the other camera here because I'm screen recording my Windows machine uh, and you can see here I'm holding my laptop, here's my recording setup um, and I don't think that you're going to be able to see this uh, but actually, no I don't think that you have any chance to see that but on my Linux machine right now, I can see the, uh, the stream from this camera. Maybe you can see that it's, you can see the little light here. It's streaming at the moment. So on my Linux machine here, I can actually see uh, the recording of that camera. And on Windows, as you can see, it's streaming this camera. So it works and I can now stop it by just saying STOP and it stopped it. The script terminated. It also terminated on Linux. And as you can see, we can stream camera data across two different machines. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. By the way, of course, you can extend this camera streaming by adding the chat. Just look at my TCP chat, my TCP GUI chat, or my advanced TCP chat. Or you can combine it with sound streaming if you figure out a way to do this platform independently or you only need it on Windows then you can do it on Windows. Uh, you can extend this uh, as you want and I maybe will follow up with a Zoom clone or a Skype clone in the future. But for now that's it and I thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.